One really interesting point in World of Warcraft is the fact that there are hybrid classes. Okay, so hybrid classes, for those who don't know already, are classes that can do multiple roles within one certain class, one specific character, as opposed to being a straight DPS class like an Armist Warrior or a Subtlety Rogue or a Fire Mage, or a straight healer class like a Holy Paladin or a Holy Priest or uh, a Restoration Druid, right? So there are, there are obviously these hybrid classes, and this is a well-known fact throughout the game. Um, now, one thing that's really been important for Legion is that there has been multiple, multiple hybrid class reworks through Shadow Priest, through Elemental Shaman, um, and Moonkin specifically has gotten the most, um, I would say the most like forward hybrid rework because this class really has been directly spoken to um, on a hybrid level. And I think that Moonkin and Shadow Priest are going to be the strongest of the three hybrid classes. I think that this specific class is going to offer a lot, and I want to explain that, and, you know, show what's new and show how the class has changed for the upcoming expansion, because for all those people who don't know if they're going to be maining a different class, um, Moonkin might be on your radar if you're interested in this hybrid class role. Now, what's really interesting is that Moonkin has this artifact ability called New Moon. Okay, so New Moon is a 15 second recharge, one second cast, and what happens is you generate something called Astral Power. And Astral Power is actually the new resource. So you see the zero to 100 bar in the top left of my screen here. Um, that is like rage or um, kind of like insanity, but you know, you spend it differently. So insanity is the Shadow Priest resource, which I've explained in my Shadow Priest video. And of course there's, you know, you, you build it up and then you spend it on Star Surge or Star Fall. Okay, so Star Surge or Star Fall are, you know, some of your strongest abilities. But back to New Moon, New Moon is your artifact ability, um, which gives you this like build up damage, which is really cool. I really like this this ability, this specific recharge thing. It has three charges, okay? So every time you cast New Moon, it evolves into Half Moon. So that's what that's what New Moon looks like right there. And I'm using my friend Pandrax for a, for a quick, you know, target dummy just to explain. Um, but Half Moon, you know, it develops into Half Moon, which is a one second longer cast time. So it's a two second cast. It deals more damage, over double the amount of damage, um, and generates 20 astral power as opposed to just 10 astral power. So if I cast Half Moon, okay, boom, it's a, it's a little bit stronger, but here's the big one. Okay, so this is Full Moon. Full Moon is a three second cast that generates 40 astral power and deals an incredible amount of damage. And you'll see that in the arena clips coming up in just a couple minutes, but Full Moon, as you can see, just like throwing it out here, boom. It does 400k damage, it's a it's a um, 3 second cast, and what's really cool is when you're in Moonkin form, if you're being hit by something, you have a 15% chance to make your next damaging spell instant. So you can actually have instant cast Half Moon, Full Moon, Lunar Strike, Solar Strike, and whatever, um, or S Solar Wrath, sorry, not Solar Strike. Um, and just like have those go out instantly and do an incredible amount of damage and use that astral power on your star surges and empower your solar wrath and your lunar strikes for future you know future abilities um, so all of this damage really you know can be played in multiple ways and i feel like as a hybrid class this has been one of the things that you know the developers have really spoken to and offered to this class and that is the multiple ways that you can really play boomkin so right now I'm spec in a, a very bursty manner. So I, I have, I'm like straight going for burst, um, you know, using my cooldowns and like just having this incredible amount of damage in like a 20 second window, uh, all burst damage, not dot damage. And just like focusing on strictly like getting your star surges, getting your empowerments, using your full moons, um, having your incarnation up and doing 35% overall increased damage and just using that efficiently with your instant cast and you know astral communion to get two free star surges so like you can put up two dots here i can use astral communion and then have two free star surges right there ready to go and that gives me a you know a ton of empowerments right here so you can just cast this whenever you're ready to go um so again that's what this spec is for it's mainly for burst damage um but you can also change to like star lord and then uh what's the one soul of the forest instead of instead of incarnation and play with those two and you can also play around starfall which is more of an aoe pressure spec because starfall when you put it down it empowers your dots it empowers those moonfire and sunfire dots by an incredible amount and does a lot of damage overall like i've seen you know i've seen myself double my my arena partners and arena enemies um damage combined like it's really that crazy whenever you play that aoe pressure spec and that's why i think um stuff like lsd uh what's it called 
Shadow Priest, even you know, like even yeah, Shadow Priest and Moonkin could be good. Like all of those things that have dot damage can be good in arena, I think, in the meta when it comes up. But obviously I don't know quite yet. But that's just kind of how I see. Now, why is a Moonkin such a good hybrid, right? What makes what makes Moonkin so good at being a hybrid over Shadow Priest or um elemental shaman and that goes to the affinity tier so the affinity tier is a talent tier that allows you to have a second specialization um on top of your moonkin specialization okay so i can be a restoration druid or like this like 75 percent 50 percent to 75 percent power restoration druid on top of my moonkin spec or i can have damage reduction by taking the guardian affinity Okay, and I can get four different abilities, which is really cool. Or I could be a Feral Druid. Um, I'm not sure why you would pick this one. Maybe that's something with PvE. But this also increases your movement speed by 15% passively and gives you uh, a bunch of different Feral abilities that do a pretty significant amount of damage. So um, maybe if you get like locked out on Astral, so if you get locked out while casting your Moon abilities, you can't cast anything, you could switch into Feral and start doing damage with the Feral Affinity. But... Uh, the best one that I've seen in Arena is the Restoration Affinity, and that is because not only does it give you Ysera's Gift, which is a 3% maximum health every 5 second heal, um, but it also gives you Swiftment, Regrowth, and Rejuvenation available to you, which are Restoration abilities only, and you can off-heal your teammates so well, and you'll see that in the arenas that I'm about to show you, but what's really cool is like you can heal yourself up like this, and like, I mean, I just healed myself for... Right here, it says regrowth. Uh, the regrowth ticks don't heal for that much, but like the regrowth itself hit for 83,000. Rejuve heals for about 23,000. And then the swift mend is the big one, and that heals for about 180,000 or, or 360,000 crit, which really does make a difference. Um, and then taking the restoration affinity and using those three abilities uh, correctly, and then also the protector of the grove passive um, for PvP. It makes it so when you're casting your healing touch, you know, if you get one healing touch off, you get a six second buff um, that makes all of your healing touches a 50% cast time. So you're talking a 1.1 second healing touch uh, where you could just spam heals and honestly you do a lot of healing. It's really hard for your healer that's being trained to die if you are spamming heals on them. Um, which is why I'm speaking to the hybrid side of the of the druid because I feel like there's so much opportunity for you to really define what you want to do with these affinity talents. And, you know, you can take 10% less damage and have your Frenzied Regen and your Iron Fur. Or you can play a more off heal spec. Like, you really have an opportunity to play multiple roles as the Boomkin. And you also can put out a crazy amount of damage, whether it's spread pressure or burst damage. And I think that this class specifically is going to see a lot of play in Legion and is really worth, you know, checking out. It's really worth um, looking into if you're interested in a hybrid spec. Interested in something that's not just, like, throwing Pyroblast or Frostbolts or... Uh, you know, putting up dots and stuff like that. This spec really does have a lot to it. Um, I think that from a weakness standpoint, the only thing is that um, I find it to be a little bit clunky with the shapeshifts being on global cooldown. I think that because like Incarnation is a global cooldown, whereas most uh, damage abilities like Icy Veins or Combustion like don't have global cooldown, so it's like a little bit slow in that regard, and you kind of have to use it preemptively, and then like dashing and changing your forms and stuff, but I guess, I mean, that's like just how Druid is played in general, so it's really not a huge deal. Um, and also, speaking to the mobility side of Boonkins, they really do have a significant amount because they have travel form, which is usually a stag, so it's not usually a bird like that, but... Um, you, you have dash, which is a three minute cooldown, increases your movement speed by 15 or 70% for 15 seconds. And then you also have your displacer beast, which is a blink and also gives you a dash for like four seconds or something like that for a 50% increase speed. So the mobility is there. I think that this class is going to be very strong. It's overall really well rounded. And real quick, if I'm going to show you exactly what doing damage on a monk looks like, I'm going to put up my star surge. I'm going to put up my... Uh, Moonfire, gonna cast this half moon into a full moon, and then I'm gonna have two star surges ready to go. Um, and he's not gonna be able to heal through this, and then I can use two more star surges right here, and then I can use my two instant cast lunar strikes and actually just finish him off right there um, while he's healing. And on, that was a little bit slow because I wasn't dotting multiple targets like I would in Arena, so I didn't actually have the two star surges ready to go, but it is what it is. But yeah, guys, uh, we're gonna jump into some arenas for you guys to check out. Uh, I filled, I think, I filmed, I think, eight matches where we just destroy people, and I, I really do think that this class is awesome, and I want you guys to experience that for yourself. So let's go ahead and check it out.
All right, guys, that does sum it up for today's video. I hope you did enjoy, and if you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. You can check out my top five favorite classes in Legion on my website, cartoons.tv, for free. And also be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already for future Legion content. I do a bunch of these class overview videos as well as teaching people how to duel, arena, all that stuff. So be sure to be tuned in for that, and I will see you all in the next one. Cartoons out.